President uh, Zeretelli, Minister Lajak, Secretary General Montella, distinguished members of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly. I'm honored to be here with you for DPA's annual session. I think time has come to better align the work of regional organizations in the framework of the Agenda 2030. And also to give more prominence to OEC activities that support the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. So I'm very pleased about the choice you have made to dedicate this year's annual session to sustainable development and security. As parliamentarians, you play an important role in supporting SDG implementation by passing laws, by allocating financial resources, and by holding governments to account. And also by raising awareness and exercising leadership on issues that determine our common future. I see your manifest interest in today's topic as an encouragement to conduct a more systematic assessment on how the OEC contributes to SDG implementation. So let us build further momentum on this issue. We have also paid attention to this topic in Vienna. Less than a month ago, I organized uh, an OEC Security Day uh, event to explore how the OEC connects to sustainable development goals. And particular attention was paid to goal 13 and the link between climate change and security, and obviously a goal 16 on peace, justice, and strong institutions. Listening to some of the speakers was a real eye-opener. The challenges are overwhelming, and we can only hope to tackle them if we all if we all pull together. Across the board, there was a clear sense of urgency to see implementation accelerate. The vast scope of OEC activities that contribute to the SDGs became very clear. We also heard views from a cross section of OEC executive structures. And I'm very grateful to the chair of the second uh, committee, Nilsa Desena, uh, for adding a parliamentary perspective uh, to our discussions. So what follows from this? I would like to make six very quick points. First, we should systematically map our SDG-related activities. This way, we can brand our everyday programmatic work in line with Agenda 2030. We can also highlight how it supports OEC participating states to implement SDGs. Second, this mapping should be done in a non-selective way. All 17 SDGs are important. At the same time, we have to understand that certain areas for engagement are more relevant than others and do deserve a closer look. For instance, OEC's role in supporting implementation of SDG 16 on peace, justice, and strong institutions clearly falls into that category. Third, the role of the OEC as a platform to bridge global and national implementation should be accentuated. The SDG framework presents an excellent opportunity to share our unique experiences and to learn from best practices in other regional organizations. Fourth, our partnerships should also extend to civil society actors, to development organizations, and to the private sector. This is essential to achieving synergies and to develop a common understanding towards SDG implementation. Fifth, gender equality, which is SDG 5, is key. We are already well positioned through our efforts to integrate a gender perspective in everything we do and our role in promoting women's economic empowerment. But clearly, more needs to be done. Finally, I strongly believe in finding a constructive way to addressing climate change and security at the OEC. As Secretary General Guterres recently put it, and I quote him, the effects of climate change are outpacing our efforts to address it, end of quote. I think we should, in the OEC, not get hung up 
over whether there is a direct link between climate change and conflict. Instead, we should build an OEC mandate that focuses on prevention and ad ad adaptation to the many adverse effects of climate change on security. Or, to put it differently, uh, and in even simpler terms, assess the impact of climate change on security and help participating states to address them. Distinguished members of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly, the crisis in and around Ukraine remains high on the OEC agenda, as uh, Miroslav Lajczak, the chair in office, has just confirmed. The conflict continues to affect populations on the ground, directly affecting the lives of many and still causing civilian casualties, including death. The recent presidential election in Ukraine provides an opportunity, an opportunity to insert new momentum into the efforts to restore peace and security to Ukraine. And I'm encouraged by a number of positive signals, including reinvigorated discussions in the trilateral contact group over concrete proposals. An excellent example is the agreement on the 26th of June in Minsk to commence this engagement in Staniska Luganska. This very positive development sends a strong message and could pave the way for further steps, including for the repair of the Staniska Luganska a bridge where every day more than 10,000 uh, uh, people cross. So, distinguished members of the PA, we are lately witnessing some promising trends, but we cannot afford to be complacent we need to use these opportunities to change the dynamics both at the political level and on the ground. And I welcome plans to hold a new N4 meeting soon. The OEC will continue to offer its support to the sites in finding a way forward in Ukraine through the discussions in Minsk and with the tireless efforts of our special monitoring mission to Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, the OEC also offers a rare venue where inclusive dialogue on political military issues is still possible. A key process is the structured dialogue. A vital area is enhancing transparency in military activities. Voluntary measures of notifying and briefing on, exercising, on exercises below notification threshold especially those close to borders, and especially SNAP exercises, can lead to reciprocity. The modernization of the Vienna document, the most important confidence and security building measure in the OEC area, remains the ultimate goal. The good news is that incremental progress is still possible, at least in some areas. Take, for instance, incident prevention and incident management and with risk reduction. Capitals play a particular, particularly critical role in this data-driven process. And I believe that you, parliamentarians of the OEC region, can help us further involve all participating states in this process. Another increasingly important topic is how security is also affected by rapid technological change. And I hope that the OEC eventually becomes a platform for meaningful dialogue on the link between technology and security. For example, if we could create a framework to encourage responsible users of artificial intelligence, this would reduce risks and uh, increase its benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest challenge I see as Secretary General for the OEC is building a stronger sense of common purpose among participating states. This organization has the potential to be the forum for meaningful dialogue and cooperation between the East and the West. To be successful, political will is key. But an authentic commitment to the organization also implies providing sufficient human and financial resources to it. The zero normal growth policy is not sustainable 
and jeopardizes the ability of the OEC to cope with the many current risks to our common security. If we want to prevent new crises before they emerge, if we want to create trust and de-escalate existing tensions, we need a strong organization. And I count on your support to convey this message. We also need a common understanding of what is at stake. It is absolutely essential to overcome increasing difficulties among participating states in adopting simple housekeeping decisions. Housekeeping decisions like adopting conference agendas, like uh, approving budgets on time, like appointing auditors for the organization, or agree on simple IT updates. Routine decisions should be discussed at the technical level and not politicized. In conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to President Serretelli and Secretary General Montella for the excellent relations that the Secretariat maintains with the OECPA at all levels, really at all levels. And of course, congratulations, uh, dear Roberto, uh, on your uh, reappointment by the OECPA Standing Committee. And I would also like to stress our full support to the Slovak Chairmanship with the informal ministerial council just uh, a day ahead of us. Thank you very much for your attention.